Good evening, good evening. Testing, testing. Hopefully you can hear me now. We are here for take two. Got thumbs up from the sound engineer. Hopefully everyone in the comments uh, chime in. It's kind of sometimes hard for Matt uh, to hear me both here in the room as well as on the headphones. All right, we see everybody joining back in. My apologies. It would not be a Tuesday without a technology issue, but here we are. Matt, you got a thumbs up. People are hearing me okay. Uh, uh, Margaret says, here, yeah, I could hear you when I was on there, so we should be good to go. Okay, we are good to go. I'm getting the thumbs up. So here we go again. Uh, now I've got to remember what I said. Um, so we are starting from scratch and uh, we are here tonight with Learning Live on Tuesday, September the 19th. And um, I am back with round two of the Physics Scoring Board and Trimmer. Uh, if you tuned into Learning Live last week, I did a whole uh, 101 on the different types of paper trimmers, of which this amazing tool was one of them. Uh, but this one is really just so much more than a trimmer. I think Matt described it best when he called it a project board. Uh, so I'm going to very quickly go over kind of the basics of the scoring and the trimming. And then we're going to get right in. I'm going to show you how to make an envelope. I'm going to show you how to make a box. And I'm going to show you how to make a tag. If you see here on the... Uh, cover of the box. You can also make uh, banners. You can also make rosettes. I'm not going to get into those tonight. I actually saw on uh, YouTube, I think it was yesterday, a really good video on uh, making the rosettes. So I will make sure I share that. Uh, one thing that I will suggest is that uh, if you are going to go watch any of the Sizzix videos on this tool, which is kind of how I, uh, is one of the ways that I, I, I started learning how to use this particular tool, because Sizzix uh, parent company is over in the UK, um, all of their descriptions and examples and everything else are going to be in metric. So just be aware of that. I'm going to show you why you know, this tool can kind of do both things. But my advice is if you're going to watch any of the Sizzix branded uh, videos, just kind of watch for the mechanism. Don't try to create along with them. If you want to create along with me uh, on replay, again, tonight I would say just listen and watch me walk through all of this. But uh, if you want to create along with me or kind of follow the steps that I definitely uh, will be using um, our imperial uh, measurements. You know the details, find us at paperwork, papercraftersworkshop.ca. Email us with any questions. Uh, before I take this box away, I just want to point out one thing that I also pointed out last week. If you are purchasing one of these brand spanking new, no, you don't get all this paper in here, but one thing I want to call your attention to is don't throw this piece out until you take off the replacement blade. This one comes with a blade already in the trimmer plus a replacement blade. Uh, so when you, the first one wears out, you've got one already in the hopper. Uh, so just don't throw this cardboard out until you grab that little piece. All right, so the box is going away. I will put it back in the box later so this can go back to the store. And if you are local to us and you want to come and see this live in person, uh, just come on into the store and we are happy to let you get your hands on this uh, handy dandy tool and see what it's all about. Um, what else do we do? So what else do we have here in front of us? We do have the instruction booklet. And this is actually pretty helpful. So like I said, I watched the videos, but also for practice tonight, I did go through and follow the instructions here in the instruction guide. Even for those who are very visual, it's got some pretty good step-by-step -step instructions here. So highly recommend you keep it. Also in your bag of tricks or box, as we call it, there is this envelope matrix table. I'm going to show you how that works in just a minute, but this is something that you definitely, 
That's quite the thing. It is quite the thing. Sorry, I thought you said hold on. I was so wondering. I said, oh my. Oh my. Yeah, even Matt is saying oh my. Um, it looks like a bingo cart on steroids, but I will show you how to use this. Um, it is obviously as an envelope matrix. It is primarily for the envelope um, function, envelope making function on this tool. Uh, I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to put this aside for right now. All right. So basics on the trimmer, just to do a quick recap. This is a bar trimmer. So your blade slides up and down along the bar. It does open out to the right, which is opposite to what my trimmer does. So it's taking me a little bit to get used to it, but that's okay. There is a track for the blade to slide along. And then as you can see over here on the deck, the deck is 12 inches wide. And um, the key measurements that for us as North American crafters is the imperial or the metric measurements. So there are measurements here. There are measurements over here down the side, and this is probably going to be the hardest part for me on this video, is that um, all of the measurement, or not all, but most of the measurements are kind of etched into this white plastic, which are not at all going to show up on camera. If we have time at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to take some black acrylic paint to try and bring out these, um, these numbers. But if we don't have time, then maybe I'll do that as just a quick... Um, a little aside. Uh, the third ruler, there is a third ruler, is this guy up here. And this is what I, now uh, Now that I'm looking at it's more of a mint color, but I've been calling it kind of, uh, calling it a blue ruler because, and when I say I've been calling it, I've created a little sheet, cheat sheet that I can share with you guys as well. So in my cheat sheet, I've called this the blue ruler. This blue ruler is kind of the, magic in this board in that you can have it straight off the top here uh, for measuring for your cutting so it does go out to the 12 inch mark if you are scoring you are going to want to kind of lift up this plunger you're going to rotate this this way and your blue ruler is going to go vertical for scoring and i'll sh I, i'll get out an actual piece of paper and actually you know what it'll come out um, when we are doing some of the different projects. But when you are uh, scoring, you want this ruler to be on the right-hand side so that you are actually digging right into these nice little grooves when you are scoring your different lines. The downside to this is that this now means there's only 10 inches here. So if you are trying to score at an 11 inch mark or a little bit bigger, uh, there is you can you can leave it like this as long as you're working on this side. This area is flat, uh, not the score line, so that you've got some nice detailed measurements for cutting thinner pieces. Now, I did say that this was kind of a magic board in that it does both imperial as well as metric, and that comes into play in two places. First and foremost, and I, because this is new, I'm struggling a little bit with this. Let me do it this way. I can grab it, there we go. So this deck pulls out down here in the right-hand corner. Not that you can see it, but it does say inches. I don't know if you can see it kind of there. If you flip it over, it says centimeters. So this side is metric. So if you happen to find a YouTuber or a set of instructions that uses metric measurements as opposed to imperial, you can absolutely do that with this board. I'm going to flip it back over and slide it back in on that imperial side. Just kind of locks in at the bottom. The other place where the metric really comes into play is this little ruler here for your scoring. Um, and if I remember correctly, I'm trying to remember how this pops out. There we go. So this lifts out like so. There we go. And you can flip it over and there is your metric measurements for when you're doing envelopes and whatnot. Um, it does have both sides. Once again, I'm just gonna pop that back in. It slides in here and then just snaps right there to keep it nice and straight. Um, couple other markings. So on this ruler, you will see a score line and an align line. I'll show you that with envelopes in a minute. And there's more. I'm going to turn it this side. 
there are three punches up the top here. This one is a corner rounder. You can do a rounded corner. Or if you pop this out. Uh, before you get too far off the scoring, so I have a question. So Matt's got a question from the audience. Does the score at eight? So um, it actually scores at sixteenths. So you've got eighths of an inch as well as sixteenths of an inch. So Adrian was asking, does it score at eighths? Yes, absolutely, it does. Um, before you got too far. Off. Yeah, and I'll come back to that because I again it'll come really into play when we are um, when we are doing our envelopes because there's a lot of sixteenths measurements in the envelope, but each one of these lines is a sixteenth of an inch, pretty sure. Anyways, we'll we'll talk about that with the envelopes. This little punch here, like I said, rounded corner or more of a squared off corner. And there are two little arrows here that you just line up the arrows on the tool, the arrows on the board and snap it back in. There is this one here, which is a hole for when you're making tags. And this one here is, um, it's got a little envelope picture on it. That does the reverse corner for doing your envelope notches. So I think, at this point, I'm just going to dig right in and I'm going to start by making an envelope because I think this will uh, make a lot of things come clear, a lot of the, the um, features and benefits of this particular tool will come clear when we do envelopes. Once you see how to do envelopes, boxes and tags are actually quite easy. I even made this teeny cute, teeny tiny little, little box today. Start with the easiest thing. Boxes, you said boxes and tags are easy. Matt's asking why I wouldn't start with the easier thing versus the harder thing. Um, I'm starting with the envelopes because it's going to show you all the different functions. And so it, I think it'll show off a lot more um, than doing the boxes and tags. Okay. All right. So if you have a We Are Memory Keepers um, punch board or some of the other tools, um, this works in a very similar way. It's just handy that it is all part of one great big um, tool that you don't have to carry 14 tools. Uh, in order to make an envelope, the real key comes down to how big do you cut your paper and where do you make your first score lines. So I'm going to show you a couple of different uh, tools that come with this device. And the first is going back to this. Bingo card. Bingo card. And I'm going to leave it on the trimmer here. And I know you cannot see all of these numbers on here, um, and nor do I want you to try. Uh, what I'm going to do is how this works is you find if you are making a card, you're going to take your card. This is a standard A2. I have folded it in half because when I put it in the envelope, the card itself is going to be folded in half. So this is the size that you want to be working with. What I'm going to do, and you don't have to leave this in the tool. I've just done that so I'm not moving tons and tons of stuff around. If you see down here on the bottom of the tool, there is this little square with an arrow that points right into this corner. You're going to take your card. You're going to put it right in this corner here. Line up your left side, line up your bottom, and whatever bingo square i'm going to call it your top corner lands in there's going to be two numbers so as i'm looking here and this one's kind of tricky because it is right on the line i'm going to go down into this square right here and again i don't know if i'm going to get close enough that there is a bold number on the top which is an eight there is a small bottom on the bottom which is seven and eleven sixteenths and let me write it down here. So we've got right. eight and seven and 11, 16. The first number is the size of the square that you are gonna cut from your paper. The second number is where you are going to start scoring. And that'll become clear in just one second. So 
one thing I'm going to do is just grab some paper. Um, because it's an envelope, I'm going to stick with a lighter weight paper as opposed to like a 49 and market paper. I will also call to your attention that you want something that you like both sides. If you have something like this paper here, maybe you want to do a beautiful uh, floral envelope. That's fantastic. But when you flip over the other side, this is what's going to be on the inside. It's all going to be cut up. So I would not recommend doing something or using paper that uh, you don't like both sides. Uh, you really don't want to do something like this mm -hmm. where you're going to have stuff cut off. And you can do directional. Uh, so this was a doodle bug paper that I uh, found in my stash. Just keeping in mind that when you form your envelope, your pattern is going to be on a diagonal. It's not going to be square on. So that's just something to note. Absolutely, you can use uh, directional paper. Just know that it's going to be ever so slightly on the sherry jaunty angle uh, when you form your envelope. So according to my chart, my envelope, I need to cut a piece that is eight inches by eight inches. So let me, I don't know, I must be in a doodle bug frame of mind because that's all the paper that I pulled out tonight. So from a cutting standpoint, I am going to lift up my arm. I'm going to slide through my paper. You always cut a square? Uh, Matt is asking if we always cut a square. Yes, for envelopes, you are always, always, always going to cut a square. Where the rectangle will form out of that if you are doing a rectangle card or the square will come out of that if you are doing a square card will come in the scoring. Okay, thank you. All right, so easy enough, eight inches. I'm going to line up here on my um, eight-inch mark and go all the way up this i'm going to just put off to the side because you know we're going to make other stuff this one turn it eight inches again and go from there so again scrap paper off the side i now have my eight inch square as i said the next measurement is the seven and eleven sixteenths now i'm not darlene I do not like sixteenth of an inch. So on my handy dandy little cheat sheet, I found a little measurement guide to help me. And when I look over here, um, 11 sixteenths is between the five eighths and the three quarter inch mark. Because I don't like sixteenths. So Darlene's laughing at you. Darlene's laughing at me. Well, I know she is, but she likes her sixteenths. I don't. So what I'm going to, okay, so then this, this is now where it gets fun because we need to do some scoring. And this is where we're going to see this next function of the board. Now, first and foremost, I need my scoring tool, which is tucked away here underneath that um, ruler. And when you are doing the scoring part of your envelope, you're going to take this tool and you're going to slide it all the way to the left. All the way, there's a little track here. You're going to slide it all the way to the left. You're going to pull up on the disc. This little disc here, again, is going to be hard to see on camera, but there are degrees uh, marked out here on this uh, little dial. And at 45 degrees, there's a little envelope for making envelopes. So I am just going to, as long as my trimmer is flat here, I'm going to go tick, 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 tick until the little arrow on this white piece is pointing at the 45 degree mark. There is a little bit of give sometimes, so I, I like to just kind of push it back a little bit so I've got some resistance. And now here is where that 7 and 11 sixteenths is going to come into play. So 11 sixteenths is between the 5 eighths and the three quarters. So seven and 11 sixteenths is going to be right over here, just before the seven and three quarters. I'm going to slide this up here. This corner I am putting at that seven and 11 sixteenths before the three quarter right there. 
and wonder if the instruction guide has a better picture just so I can bring this up okay so let's take a look here on this blue ruler as I said there is a line here that says score and a line here that says a line there are actually little notches right in the ruler that you can put your scoring tool in so you know you are starting right at the right spot right in the hole so i'm going to go score tuck it into the notch and score now just like any scoring tool you are much better off to go over it a few times versus pressing too hard but i've just created my score line like this now that is the only time we need that 7 and 11 16 measurement because now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this 90 degrees this score line is now going sideways instead of up and down. And I'm going to line that up, you guessed it, with this word that says align. I'm gonna get my scoring tool and I'm gonna come down the notch. Huh. Even that is amazed. Rotate again, no measurements needed. Cause if you start doing that seven and 11 sixteenths, it's actually not gonna work. You want to just stick with that alignment tool. They have done all the engineering for you. And then lastly, lining the score line up with the word align and score again. All right, so now I have scored on all four sides. And I know this is pretty paper, but just so you can see, let's sharpie this up. because I'm gonna show you something in a second. So as I said, I did my first score line, then when you were coming back around to the second one, you just line that up and draw in your next score line. Now the next step here, I'm actually going to flip the board around just because I don't like reaching across the board. Um, but I'm gonna come whoop, over here to the envelope little punch here. Now, on the end, you can see that there is a dotted line in the middle and two solid lines on the end. Again, this is for foolproof alignment. I'm going to take one of my little corners here, and when I slide this in, solid line on the left is going to line up with this line that's coming out here. Solid line on the right is going to come out this line here, and that dotted line is right in the middle punch and there's my little notch once again line up my solid lines with my score lines rotate punch and last but not least punch uh, there we go now i'm gonna warn you i learned this the hard way there's nothing underneath this so when you lift up your board there are all your little corner bits. So don't lift up your board and have these little bits go flying all over the floor. Just make sure you pick them up and put them in recycling. One more step, we're gonna come back over here to the corner rounder and we're gonna round all these four corners. So again, yes, I'm tucking them under here, but I'm not pushing so I don't have to worry about it. Give it a snug, give it a push, and now you have a rounded corner on your, on your corner. There we go. Everything all in one. Okay, so now I can just fold along these lines. Because I've used the Sharpie, I'm going to put that Sharpie on the inside. I do recommend, as I often do with new tools and new fun things to play with, grab some scrap paper that you don't like the color of, or maybe you're not going to use anymore. Do some practice ones and then just keep them in your box. Write, write the measurements right on them. This one, these ones I've done um, post-it notes, but you could actually write right on your envelope so you know where to start. Now, with this format, I can just tape it down like this if I want a top folding or a top opening envelope, or maybe I want to go this way. 
So it's completely up to you, depending on how you want to glue those flaps together. Oh. And that is that. Oh. Even Matt is going, huh, I bet he's thinking, I may not be crafty, but man, that tool could help me make some envelopes. No, I'm thinking, I thought Dr. Charlie find out how they did the engineering. Oh, <laughs> Matt, Matt wants to talk to my, my, my kid that's in engineering to kind of figure out how it's all done. So when it comes to making an envelope, the actual envelope making is easy peasy. It's figuring out what size of paper that is the key. So I'm gonna do one more because this kind of is the key and I'm gonna show you a different way to get your paper measurements. Before you go too far. Okay, Matt says we've got some questions, so we'll take those first. Uh, this one so far. Okay. Um, Diana, that's a good question. At least I think it's a good question. He wants to know, does the bottom piece on the envelope go on the inside or the outside? All right, so Diane's question, does the bottom piece go on the inside or the outside? And I'm guessing you mean this. I think so. I would say it's a personal preference. I tend to put the side flaps in and then this bottom flap on top. And I do that for two reasons. First of all, to me, it's a little bit easier to put that your tape or your glue on top and then fold this over. Also, um, when you're then folding your top flap down to seal it, maybe you're going to use spellbinder sealing wax. I don't know. It gives you something better to grab on. Whereas if you if it was this way, then it's going to, um, I don't know, I just, per personally I feel it's a little bit flimsier that way. At the end of the day, I do not think there is a wrong answer. There is uh, just however you do it, as long as you don't do it this way. <laughs> so, and that made Matt laugh. So, all right, so let's pick a different card size. And I'm going to show you a different a different way to get measurements and this is again where you're going to want to start with your uh, instruction guide the instruction guide has qr codes inside and so you can use your phone or i've got my tablet here and i am simply going to um, open up my camera and if you hover your camera let's see if it's going to see if, if technology will work well with itself Okay, I'm gonna move that up, bring this down. I'm scanning this QR code for the Americas, because that's us. I'm hovering my camera over top, and you'll see, I don't know if you can see it here on mine. I don't think I'm in the right spot. There we go. There is a little yellow link that is popping up. I'm gonna click that, and this is gonna open up to a web webpage. And if you scroll down, to scoreboard and trimmer generator and click start creating there is actually a little calculator here the green one here we'll come back to in a little bit that is for boxes the pink one is for envelopes so another way we can do this is um, i'm gonna do a mini slim this is a number six slim it is six and a quarter inches wide by three and a half inches tall, or sorry, three and a half inches wide, six and a quarter inches tall. Now here, here's the trick with this. This uh, calculator does not like decimals. So my length is going to be six and one half. Yeah, yeah with numbers. Yeah, hang on. Six and one half, not 6.5, six and a half. Or did, no, I said six and a quarter. Sorry, let's get the measurements right. Width is three space and a half. No decimals. It will not like it, it will tell you not to do that. You hit generate now, and I, again, I think this is a bit of a fault. Maybe over in the UK, they have much better eyesight than we do but the letters are really, really faint. I'm gonna write it down here, just so we can all see it. It says the stock or the paper should be seven and 13 sixteenths, ick, yeah. ick. And then the alignment is eight and 15 sixteenths. 
Uh, Darlene is laughing at me. What I will also say is 16th of an inch is very tiny, very tiny. So if you have to go to nine, if you go seven and 14 sixteenths, which would be seven and seven eighths and nine, I'm pretty sure you're going to be okay. You're always better to go a little bit bigger because what will hold a lot will hold a little. So it's not going to mess things up too, too much if you go a teeny bit better, bigger, if you really don't like these sixteenths of an inch like I do. The other thing that I will tell you is the numbers you get from the generator may or may not match the numbers you get on the chart. So don't try to do both at the same time. Either use the bingo chart or use the calculator, but don't do both. And my example here, so my doodlebug envelope, I followed the chart. My little plaid here, one, I followed the app. It is, looks like maybe all in all an eight to three sixteenths of an inch difference. They both hold an A2. So as long as you're only picking one, don't worry too much about which one. All right, so what did I say? So I need a piece of paper that is seven and 13 sixteenths. Let's grab a different piece of paper this time. I'm gonna do this blue one. It's got this quilted pattern on the back. So my paper needs to be seven and 13 sixteenths. And where'd my cheat sheet go? 13 sixteenths is between three quarters and seven eighths. So seven between three quarters and seven eighths right there. And now I'm gonna rotate because it's always a square. Seven and 13 sixteenths between three quarters and seven eighths right there. While you're talking. There's my square. We've got another question. Margaret wants to know if you can access the website even if you don't have the QR code to scan. Um, that's a really good yes. question. I believe so. Yes, I just um I've seen that. I've seen all that when I go to Sizzix.com. Okay, so if you go to Sizzix.com and and search the uh, scoring board and trimmer, then yes, you should be able to access it. All right, so I've done my I've got my square. Now I need to do my scoring. So we're going to slide, click, we're going to come back 45 degrees, one, two, three, find my scoring tool, tuck, and first measurement is always using the ruler. So my measurement was eight and 15 sixteenths, so that's almost nine, right there, find my scoring notch, knock it down. And just nice and gentle, don't push too hard. Now I'm going to rotate, align my score with the aligning notch. Score, rotate, align, and score, and rotate, align, And score. So once again, you are seeing that, that even though this started as a square, we've got a nice rectangle opening that is perfect for my card. Let's pop this up. Let's slide it back and flip around. So envelope notches first. I'm aligning my score lines with the solid lines on the punch and go. Punch and go, align, punch and go, and punch and go, slide it over, let's round, round, whoops, round, round. While you're having something there. Yep, more questions? A couple other questions that are both related. Okay um back to the generator okay um question about 
does the decimal portion work on the on the infra, on that generator if you're using the metric version? And I know the answer because I've already tested it. Okay, so let's go over the question first in case you can't hear Matt without his mic. Uh, does the British option allow you to use decimals? And Matt has already seen the answer and he says thumbs up. So if you look at the generator here, you have the option to choose between centimeters and inches. So if you were to go to the centimeters, then yes, you can use the decimal. So thumbs up. There is the question. Did you say there was a second one? Uh, we have two people were asking something oh, similar. Similar questions. All right. So then I would just fold, fold along my score lines and my little card just nestles in. You can see it fits. And there you go. Perfect envelope for every card. I like that envelope. It's cool. So really, really fun. Really, really easy. Uh, if you were actually to put this in the mail, what my recommendation is to cut a piece of white paper or use a white address label to write on this so that it is much easier for the post office or the post delivery guys. Uh, but otherwise, my, my recommendation is get out your scrap paper and try all the things so i did say that i'm i've got this cheat sheet if you purchase one of these boards then we can give you a copy of this or send this to you as a pdf what i've done is i've kind of walked through when you're cutting your blue ruler goes horizontal make sure the left end of the ruler is in line with the left edge of the scoreboard or of the trimmer when you're scoring and we haven't done this yet. We'll do this when we do the box next. The blue ruler goes vertical, and you use these numbers here to do your scoring. But if you're scoring larger than two and a half, you can leave. You can leave this here and use that blue ruler along the top. It's just for this area that that doesn't work. Uh, when making an envelope, the blue ruler will pulse the left, rotate 40 to five degrees, your first score is to use the measurement. Your remaining scores is to use that alignment notch. And then because I like you guys, I picked out some of the, the Canadian more common card sizes. A2, 5x7, 6x6, number 6 mini slim, number 9 slim. And I have put the cut, the, the square measurement and the score measurement on here for you as well as this cheat sheet on where the 16ths are and how to do the math. I did the math for you. So if you have already purchased one of these, just email us and we will send you that cheat sheet. If you are about to purchase one of these, um, just put a note in your order or ask us for it when you come in and we will make sure we include that for you. Okay, so let's move on to boxes. Let's, Wait, no, we got some, we, we, okay, we've got some questions before we move on to boxes. Okay, just as a recap, when you move the arm down onto the board, what number did you move it to? I'm assuming that was the envelope thing. So, um, Valerie is asking, when you move the arm down onto the board, what number are you moving it to? Not totally sure. So I think that was when you're So when we're doing the envelope, you're going to lift the point. Let me bring it down. Not enough space on camera here. You're going to pull this out and you're just going to slide this right across. And then you're going to move it to 45 degrees. I think that's what you are asking. And then your first measurement is based on. So if you are using the uh, bingo chart, it is the second number in that square. The first number being how big you cut your paper. The second number in that square is where you line it up on this side. It's asking about the arm. If you are looking on here, it is the alignment measurement, and that is only for the first score. So hopefully, Valerie, that covers what you were looking for. And another question. Yeah. If you have a dimensional card, will it fit as is, or should you use a larger card size for your envelope? So very good question, Adrian. If you are creating a dimensional card, uh, should you use a larger card size? Um, 
The very short answer is I don't know. Uh, what I can say is there is a fair amount of play uh, still in here. So for example, and this was using the dimensions from the chart. And if you can see, there's still a fair amount of play in, so personally, I don't think I would go any bigger than what this says. If I pull out the one, let's pull out the one here that I use the, um, the calculator just so we can see. I guess, I guess my best advice for you, Adrian, is maybe try one bigger. So see, even this, this is the one that used the calculator and there is still a fair amount of play in that space to give you room for the dimension. Um, Matt's pulled a, I, I think she might mean even more like a Deanna card oh, than know. like this one. Um, I think you're going to be okay if you stay true to, um, stay true to the measurements that they give you. But if you're, if you're unsure, or maybe you've got a super, super, super thick card, maybe go, maybe just grab a piece of copy paper and do a rough copy first and just make sure that it's going to fit uh, exactly the way you want it. For a dimensional card, you may even want to go up to more of a box which is sort of what we're gonna do next. Now, this is a two-part box as opposed to a one-part box, um, but that is something also to consider. You might wanna do a really thin um, card box as opposed to an envelope, just, just a suggestion. But the good thing is you can do it with this tool. All right, thank you, we're caught up. Okay, we are caught up on, caught up on questions. Please do keep them coming. If we happen to miss them, we'll go back and answer. Or again, you are more than welcome to call us, email us, all that good stuff. And we're happy, happy, happy to help you out. Okay, boxes. Boxes uses the same generator. So, so simple. And you, I love the generator for this because you can either make little flat skinny ones. This one is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Um, by one inch tall. This one is square. So you can make boxes of pretty much any size. And once again, so let me, I'm going to do that three and a quarter by four and a quarter one again. I'm going to come over here now to that blue box. So my length was four and a quarter. My width, I want it to be three and a quarter my height i want my box to be one inch tall now here you can make your box or you make your lid as deep as your box or you can go a little bit less deep so on my prototype one i did three quarters of an inch and that's going to generate so this is telling me, I'm going to, I'll write it down so that you can see, because I can barely see on the screen. So my box is five and four sixteenths, okay, which is five and a quarter. Why would they say five and a quarter? Though? I'm not sure why they don't just say five and a quarter, but they don't. My other dimension is six and four sixteenths. So where envelopes were always, always, always squares, your box is going to be different. Uh, my score line is going to be one. For my lid, it is uh, four and 13 sixteenths by five and 13 sixteenths. Not that I can read my own handwriting. And I'm going to score at that three quarters of an inch. So it's always handy to have some scrap paper if i mean you've got your your i've got my ipad here to uh review to review it the other thing i recommend for when you are doing boxes is i have two post-it notes one says box and one says lid because the dimensions are not that far off but this way i make sure i'm doing the right pieces so 
This time, because it is a box and not an envelope, you can go to a thicker paper. You want it to be a little bit more sturdy. And I would argue that this time, you don't necessarily have to be as fussed about the colors on the inside. You can, if you, if you, if it matters, definitely make sure that both sides look pretty. But for the most part, people are going to be looking what's in the box versus what's on the back side of the paper. But just things to know. Okay, the nice thing about this is that even to do a box this size, I can do this with one piece of cardstock. All right, five and four sixteenths, which is five and a quarter. Easy peasy, line it up and slice this is my box so now i'm going to rotate to six and a quarter like this and i'm going to put my box post-it note on that now for my other piece my measurement is four and thirteen sixteenths yikes backwards four and thirteen sixteenths so thirteen sixteenths once again, is between three quarters and seven eighths. Four and 13 sixteenths right there. And five and 13 sixteenths right there, almost six. All right. And this is my lid. That way I don't mix them up. Okay, scoring. This is where I said I'm going to show you scoring. This is going to come all the way around. And here's where you're going to look at the numbers that are on the top of the scoreboard. And I am simply scoring at one inch all the way around. So put my paper down. There is a little notch here on the ruler. I'm going to snug up into that corner. One inch mark and score. Rotate. Snug, one inch, and score. Rotate, snug, one inch, and score, and all the way around. Just so I don't forget, I'm going to put that back on top. Lid, my score line is three quarters of an inch. Exactly the same process, just at three quarters of an inch instead of one. Your lid is going to be that little bit bigger, and your score line is based on how far you want the lip of that lid to come down. There we go. And then, in theory, you could put your board away. I'm just going to come back here. All you need now, now, in the video that I watched, he actually got the trimmer out and did these little snips. Not gonna lie, scissors are easier. Snip. 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 And snip. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the lid. There we go. It is almost nine o'clock. Matt saying it's almost nine o'clock, which is his way of saying, move it along. My show starts soon. Well, we know it's all about his show. What show is it? Is it Ahsoka tonight? Yep. Has to be ready for one. Charlie oh, because Charlie's going to call and say, did you watch it yet? Well, sorry, Matt. You can hang out for another five minutes. We won't be much longer. So tape just on those corners. Total honesty. I've learned the hard way. Put your tape on first, then do all your forming. And you're just going to tuck. Easy, easy. And that last one goes in, so that's my lid. My base is going to go the exact same way. Now, if you refer to the instruction guide, they actually give you two different options for uh, the box. This is just... Um, called a straight box there is also I think it's called a they called it a favor box 
where instead of cutting the corners, they scored it into a little triangle and scooched it together. Um, I personally feel like there's less bulk in this method, but give them both a try. See which one you like better. And you know what? In hindsight, I think I would have put the blue side showing out, but I but I've got the tape on here, so. All right. So that is my box bottom. My box lid goes on top. Unless it gets stuck. And there you go. So you can make boxes in all different shapes, sizes, well, shapes being squares or rectangles, but uh, different sizes, different thicknesses, and so on and so forth. All right, because time is ticking, I am going to finish off by showing you how to cut a tag. Super, super easy, almost no learning curve to this whatsoever. Let me find a piece of, where did I just put all of that in here? All right, so I'm gonna take this piece of paper here and I'm totally just eyeballing right now to get uh, a rectangle. So maybe, yeah, let's do three inches here. So I've got this little piece here that was three inches by, well, it's a little bit bigger than four and three quarters. I'm not gonna tell you how many sixteenths because I don't wanna count. But if you are making a tag, you're going to cut your rectangle. You're gonna pick the angle that you want your corners to go on. So I'm gonna stick with that 45 degree angle just because it's easiest. I'm gonna lift that up and I'm gonna just get this ruler here to that 45 inch mark. This is where you do need to do a tiny bit of eyeballing. So there is the track where your blade goes in. You're just gonna kind of scoot your piece of paper up until you've got enough of a corner that you want cutting off. Before you cut, before you move, you're gonna refer down here. The bottom of my paper is at seven and a quarter. So I'm gonna snick this up like this. My little corner comes off. Now I'm gonna take this piece I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to line this up at, what did I say? Seven and a quarter. Mm -hmm. And I snick it down. And there is my perfect tag. Perfectly even on both sides. And then I can go back to the other side. This is where my little hole punch. Line it up centered left to right. Punch. And there is your hole in your tag. And your tag is good to go. So I think when I was talking about this trimmer last week, yes, it is a card maker's uh, board. If you are a card maker, then you're gonna use probably almost all of these functions. But also if you are a mini album person, because you've got your scoreboards. One second, Matt, Matt's raising his hand says there's a question. Uh, it's got your scoring to do your spines. It, you can do envelopes for pockets. You can do tags. You can round corners. You've got all those components that will go into making your own mini album to um, use on this board as well. All right, we have a question before we sign off for tonight. Diane would like to know, what is that little white notchy thing on the ruler at near the word inch? Over, on the left -hand side. over here? Yes. I believe it is just an anchor to hold this ruler into place. I have not learned about, oh, you know what it is? It's your little handle. So when, so you know how I went like this? I think what it's meant to be is to do that. It just gives you a little handle to pull uh, in order to then move this into your envelope uh, position. So when you are doing envelope score lines, you definitely want to pull it out to that side so that you have easy access to these uh, scoring and aligning marks. I do not believe it has any other function other than that. Um, I have not seen that yet, but if anybody finds out, let me know. Any other questions? No. All right. We've enveloped, we've tagged, we've boxed. Like I said, you can do banners. The banners are very similar to doing tags. It just uses that diagonal, uh, excuse me, line for cutting. And rosettes is just a lot of scoring. 
and lots and lots of fun. So there, there you have it, folks. That is one full hour on the scoring board and trimmer from Sizzix, or as we call it, the project board. Uh, go and check things out on the website. Uh, I believe they're $89.99, Matt. I think so. I think that is correct. And once again, if you purchase one or if you have already purchased one, send us an email and we'll send you the handy dandy cheat sheet as well uh, with all of those basic things. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some washi tape, stick it on the inside of the box and keep it with me at all times. All right, folks, that is it for tonight. We will see you right back here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for What's New. We've got some cool Christmas stuff and some new stamps and lots of other fun stuff to share with you. So until then, have a wonderful evening, a good sleep, and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.